do I want to become the best version of me? Or do I just want to become? So I've been thinking a lot recently about the difference between becoming the best version of myself and just becoming me. These are the deep thoughts that go through the brain of a neurodivergent woman in her 50s. <laughs> if you're interested, stick around. Um, so I've been thinking a lot about this lately. I watch a lot of YouTube videos. They help me to um, understand the perspective of other people, and they help me to see how other people see the world. And on YouTube right now, there's a lot of videos about <clears throat> how, like, how to become the best you. Um, there's 30-day challenges, there's decluttering videos, there's um, exercise videos, there's how to be more productive at work videos, there's how to be a better parent videos, there's so many videos all focused around how to be better. And that got me thinking a lot about if that's the way that I want to be living my life, if I always want to be striving to be better, or if there should be a point in time, especially now that I'm 55, if I can just say, I'm good. I'm good with where I am, and I just want to become. I just want to slowly and gradually become myself. Whether that's a better version of myself or not, just to roll with the tide and see where I end up. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is because when I think through my life, over my life, I've always been striving. I've always been doing. I've always worked. I started working when I was 12. I started babysitting. At what point do we just get to stop striving and just enjoy the life that's available to us. So like if we think back to way, way back early man times, all they were responsible for was waking up, finding something to eat, and staying alive and maybe sitting with their tribe or their family and building communication, building that, building that tribe. But beyond that, there was no work. There was no striving to be better. It was just living. And I'm kind of over this work culture where my value comes from the work that I do. My value should come from the human being that I am, not from what I contribute to society. My value should just come from the fact that I'm here on this planet, breathing and enjoying the things that it has to offer. And I guess I'm having these thoughts lately because I, I have put in the majority of my life since I was 12. <laughs> I've put in the effort to earn money, to prove myself to whatever employer I've had at whatever time. And I'm just kind of done. No, I'm not going to be leaving my job. No, I'm not going to be, you know, finding a commune to join. I, I am going to continue doing what I'm doing because I have to out of necessity. Sorry, this piece of hair is bugging me. I have the tree holding back my hair right now so it stops falling in my face. <laughs> um, I'm, 
I, I'm just tired of having to prove myself. And I think that that's fair. I think after 43 years <laughs> of proving myself it's enough, I want to go into work and enjoy the parts of my job that are enjoyable. Um, I don't want to be meeting anybody else's goals. I don't even think that I have the desire to like be a team player anymore. And this isn't a negative Nancy kind of thought. It's just really me focusing on who I really am. I want to spend the next 50 something years getting to know me. You might be noticing that I'm looking like not in the camera. I just, I'm facing a whole bunch of trees and they're really pretty. And when I think I like to look out around me, it helps me focus my attention. So um, all you neurodivergent folks out there, you might understand me not staring right at the little dot right there because that's very unnatural. So uh, this is also part of my unmasking a little bit. Uh, in fact, I think this whole conversation is about my unmasking a little bit. Um, for you non-neurodivergent folks, um, unmasking, I'm going to try to describe it as best I can with the knowledge that I have right now. Unmasking is when you kind of stop presenting yourself the way the world expects you to present yourself and you present yourself in the way that's most true to who you really are as a neurodivergent person. So who I really am right now is somebody who just needs to look out at the trees in front of me. Here, I'll show you what's in front of me. Let me see. Anyway, I, I want this next part of my life to not be about busyness. I don't want to be busy. Um, I don't want to be spending my free time running errands and making sure I'm meeting the needs of others. I don't want to be living by deadlines. Um, I don't want to deal with paperwork. <laughs> um, I, I just want to like wake up and be outside and I want to look at the trees and the bumblebees that are flying in the tree above me and I want to get the sunlight on my skin and in my eyes and I want to make art and I want to take long walks and I want to be with my people and I want to read good books and I want to see beautiful places. I don't want to be busy. I just want all the busyness to stop. Do you ever feel that way? Do you want the busyness to stop? So you can just like enjoy the world around you? That's where my head is right now. I think because I'm really feeling overwhelmed with all of the responsibilities that I have professionally at the moment. Um, the responsibilities around my children have greatly decreased now that they're both in college and they are thriving. I just need to be supportive mom. I don't need to take them places anymore. I, I don't need to, you know, buy very much for them anymore. I don't need to manage their time anymore. It's really a gift having gotten to this place. But that leaves me open to, oops, sorry, that leaves me open to, like, needing to, not needing, that leaves me open to taking care of my needs. <laughs> and quite honestly, I, although I just told you about things that I want to do, I'm still not quite sure what, what my own needs are. I just know I don't want to be busy. I don't want to prove myself. 
I just want to wake up and exist. And some of that has to do with my autistic self. Because for somebody who's autistic, their experience of the world is an internal experience as opposed to experiencing the world outside of themselves. Sometimes, like, some, there are some days where I just want to do this. I just want to literally talk to myself. <laughs> I think that's why I enjoy this style of making videos is because it fulfills that need to just talk to myself and ramble. And those of you who stay to watch might enjoy the ramblings. You know, because it's in these ramblings where you just kind of go on and on, where you find little nuggets and where you make connections, where you like have suddenly some deep awareness of something. There's another YouTuber I enjoy watching. Um, his channel name recently changed, but it's, uh, I believe, Everyday Wayne Unscripted. And he doesn't talk for as long as I do here. He, his are much shorter. Um, his views are much more succinct. But he'll just hop on and talk, and it's kind of like the thoughts that are in his brain. I appreciate that about him. Anyway, I got, I got off. That's my ADHD. See, I have both, autistic and ADHD. So if you're new to this neurodivergent world, as I am, because I'm finding these things out about myself in the last year, the combination of autism and ADHD is considered ADHD. So I am an, or I can call myself an autistic adhd -er. So I have this four-day weekend from work, and I'm already on the third day. And the first three days were literally doing nothing, just deep rest. Uh, yesterday, I went to a thrift store for an hour and picked up a few things. But after that, deep rest. And um, I'm on the third day now, actually. And I'm out here chit-chatting with you and having these deep thoughts during my time of deep rest. But see, that's the thing. I can't have these deep thoughts when I'm like stuck in the rigmarole of work. Being an elementary school teacher is chaotic. It's actually very toxic. <laughs> it's a very toxic job especially for somebody like me who struggles with executive functioning and sensory overwhelm. So just sitting here in the park, staring at the trees and rambling on about not wanting to be busy. This feels so good. I was about to say, raise your hand if you feel the same way. Drop a like or leave me a comment if you feel the same way. If you could just sit in the park, looking at the trees and listening to the birds for an hour or two or more, like this is healing for me. There's another YouTuber I really enjoy. His channel is called Gooby and Dooby. And um, he also tends to sit and talk about the things that are on his mind in this very same manner. And I'm not trying to be like anybody. Literally, I'm just becoming me. And in becoming me, this is what I like to do. And I guess that's why I like the channels of those other people who just sit and chat, because I, that resonates with me. When Gooby and Dooby, it's, I don't know his first name. I'm sorry, Gooby and Dooby. <laughs> if you end up watching this, I, my apologies. Uh, Gooby and Dooby is the man and his dog. And I think his dog is Dooby. Anyway, I'm off, off track again. But um, 
he goes out into nature and talks about important things that are on his mind and usually has some pretty big epiphanies over the course of his conversation with himself, but really with you all. I've already done the most important thing that I could do with my life. I've already done it. I grew two children in my body twice, two different times. <laughs> and I raised those two children to adulthood successfully. They're happy. They know they are loved. They are excited about their lives. I can't imagine doing anything more precious and more valuable than that. So everything else, everything else that happens from this point on is just like fluff. It's just extra. Like I've already done that. I don't, I don't need to do any more. I don't need to do any more to, to like give to society. I just, I just need to be a decent person. I have this little button I wear when I'm at work every day. I'm trying to get it off of my purse right now. So give me a second here. Be a nice human. That's all I need to do. Like, that's all I'm responsible for. That. Being a nice human, being nice to humans, being nice to myself. Yeah. I've done enough. I just don't want my next 55 years to be about proving myself and having to show people what I'm capable of. I've, I want my next 55 years to be just like this with some friends, <laughs> being able to hang out with some friends now and then. I like being in my head. I like thinking, I like listening, I like making deep connections. Sometimes I like doing, I don't hate my job, it's just very overwhelming to me. And at the end of it every day, I'm really emotionally, physically and mentally completely drained, like not even a drop if you turn the glass of my teaching job upside down and shook out every last drop from that glass. There's nothing left at the end of that six hour day. And so, but, but I enjoy like getting the tasks done that I need to get done during the day. I just don't like, I just don't like that I have to do it. I think that there's a few more things that I want to make sure that I, if I talk about like the things I want to accomplish in life, there's a few more things I do want to accomplish, but not for the sake of doing things, just for the sake of filling my own bucket. And that's making some more art. I really miss making art. For me, the creation of art is like, is giving back to the world and also making art is like what I'm doing right now it's like me finding inside of myself and getting it out just it's like turning my insides out because sometimes as an autistic adhd -er, saying the translating what's going on inside of myself into words that make sense to other people <laughs> feels impossible at times like even with the talking that i've done right now i don't really feel like what i'm feeling inside of here is coming out correctly 
partly because I see my thoughts in pictures. I don't see my thoughts in words. So the pictures aren't always exactly clear. And the thoughts don't come out exactly clear. I do the best that I can. And that same thing goes with making art. Like, but with the creation of a thing, it doesn't have to be exactly like the, the, the way that it's translated out into something visual for you to see, for the world to see, doesn't need to translate exactly. Because everybody's going to take from it the thing that they want to take from it. It's really quiet here right now, even though there are people around and there's cars driving around in front of me on the road, sitting right here by this tree. And, you know, I come to this park a lot. I've been here many times. I've made many videos in this park, but I've never sat here at this tree in this spot. And I actually love it. It's bringing me a lot of joy. Even though there's a bumblebee buzzing around at my foot right now, <laughs> very close to me, that makes me very unhappy and I might get up momentarily. Oh, now there's two of them. So much for sitting in this spot. Anyway, thanks for listening to my brain this morning. And um, if you are interested in learning more about my deep thoughts <laughs> as a human being on this planet, um, you can watch one of these videos next. Whatever's on the screen, click on it. Enjoy it. See you next time.